right, this brings us into what I affectionately call gas law stoic. So we're going to keep using the same gas laws that we have been using, but we're going to introduce a little bit of a stoichiometric component. <clears throat> now, all that means is that we've got some chemical reactions going on. So we'll need a chemical equation, maybe do some conversions, that kind of stuff. But whenever you've got a big word problem like this, that's a whole lot of words up there. 42 grams of potassium chlorate decomposes into a salt and a common gas. The gas is collected in a 2.7 liter container at 4.8 atmospheres. What is the temperature inside the container? Now this problem also has a B section, but let's get to that in a minute, one thing at a time. So as I've said over and over again, perhaps the best place to start is just by underlining what looks useful, because this is a whole lot of information. Well, just continuing in the mindset of the gas law problems that we did last time, right off the bat, I have a volume right there. Uh, kinetic molecular theory of gases says that whatever container the gas in, is in, it's going to take up all of that. So I have a volume right here. I also have a pressure. <clears throat> now it says that a gas is collected. The gas is collected. Well that implies it's coming from up here somewhere. Potassium chlorate is not a gas. It usually comes as a, a white powder. You can dissolve it in water, but it's not a gas. So the gas has to be coming from somewhere else. Here is my gas but they gave me information about potassium chlorate, not my common gas. Hmm. So to figure out what the heck my common gas is, I'm gonna need my chemical equation. So problem tells me that potassium chlorate is decomposing. So one thing becomes two or more into a salt. So a positive ion with a negative ion, typically a halide, but not always by any stretch. So K is my only positive, and a common gas. Well, there's two gases I can get out of here, chlorine gas or oxygen gas. But since I'm making that salt, halide salt, we know oxygen is our common gas. So this is what we're collecting. This is what I'm going to need an amount of, not this potassium chlorate. There's where our stoic is going to come in. Since nothing is changing, I have no change in temperature, no change in pressure, I know this is going to be a Puffnert problem, but to do Puffnert, I still need all my variables. I don't have an N. So we got to come up with that amount. First, we got to balance this guy. Let me see here. If we put a 2 here, and we need a 3 here, and a 2 here, that should do it. So this is the gas that I am collecting. So 42 grams of potassium chlorate. I'm going from grams of potassium chlorate to moles of oxygen. Remember, N has to be in moles, so we're just going to stop there. First thing, though, my mole ratio that gets me from reactants to products, it's from moles to moles. So I need my formula mass of this guy to get us from grams to moles. So one potassium plus one chlorine plus three oxygens gives us about 122.55 grams of potassium chlorate per one mole of potassium chlorate. So grams potassium chlorate cancel, that leaves me in moles of potassium chlorate, but again, that's not my common gas. I'm looking for my oxygen. So I have to use my mole ratio from my balanced equation to convert. So two moles potassium chlorate per three moles of O2, multiply all the way across the top, divided by all the way across the bottom, and we get 0.2. So this is my N. Now that I have my N, we can start talking Povnert. I'm looking for T, so I gotta get T by himself here. So we gotta divide away the N and the R. Let's make sure everything's in the right units, liters, atmospheres, temperature will be in Kelvin when I get it, N's in moles, all right. Now 
Now let me see, how many sig figs can I have? Looks like two, so no more than three. And there we have our final answer for the first part. Part number two. The gas must be compressed for shipment to achieve a volume of 1.5. Hey there, my volume changed. So this is not a Povnert problem. So to achieve a volume of, so that's my final scenario. That's my ending there. Can you see that? Yes, you can. So my initial pressure and volume have to come from back up here. So my initial volume was 2.7. My initial pressure was 4.8, all from that original big paragraph way the heck up there. So I have two different scenarios. So this is not a Puffnert. This is combined gas law. More specifically, our temperature was kept constant. So this is, in fact, Boyle's law. P1V1 equals P2V2. We're looking for P2. Plug in your math. bibbity bobbity boo <clears throat> so things to remember in gas law stoic problems. First off is just dissect the problem. Take a step back and actually look at what seems to be useful. These problems are notorious for giving you way more information than you actually need. So by underlining it, you give your brain kind of a path to follow, kind of a, a way to focus on particular words as opposed to getting hung up on the whole thing. Once you've got that done, we can start translating into variables. Well, once I noticed that there were no changes, I had no volume or pressure changes up here, I knew this had to be a Pufnert problem, but my N didn't give me what I needed. Since I had a chemical reaction going on, I knew I needed an equation, showed me I needed some stoic. So this is a fairly logical progression, if you can just give your brain a place to start. Um, be careful when rearranging the equation. This is a, a big source of error here, um, but I see more mistakes just personally when I see people trying to manipulate the numbers. You flip things around, forget a decimal, add a zero, all kinds of stuff. On B down here, same situation, lots of words, most of which I don't even need. So that looked useful, but it was a different situation to achieve a volume of. So we changed our volume. Since I changed something, Pufnert's out the window. Can only use that for given situations. Since I knew this was a changing situation, that brings me over to the combined law, which in this case I could simplify. Make life easy. No need to make it more complicated than it has to be. Um, rearrange the equation, shove in your numbers to ultimately get your answer. So, follow the yellow brick road, as it were. Since these problems are so long, I'm going to put up two additional videos going through just other types, uh, other incarnations that gas law stoic problems might take. Uh, some of these are doozies, so they take a little bit longer to do. But check them out, because it's a, a real good indicator of just how well you can translate these problems into more regular speakable terms. So best of luck. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment box below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Happy stoiking!